we're going to be using hybridization to determine a number of different things this semester. So it's important that you understand it and can figure out the hybridization of an atom. Right now, we're going to look at two things we can determine through hybridization, and that's bond length and bond strength. So let's draw out um, three different molecules with different hybridizations in the atoms. So what we're looking at is a carbon-carbon single bond, double bond, and triple bond. Now, if you go through and figure out the hybridization of each carbon involved in the bond, here we have sp3 carbons. Here we have sp2 carbons. And here we have sp carbons. And we can actually break this down into the percentage of character. So in the case of sp3, that orbital is one part s, three parts p. So we would say 25% s, 75% p. In the case of sp2, uh, it's a little harder to break down thirds, but it's about 33, let's say 33.3% S, 66.6% P. And then for SP, 50% S and 50% P. And before we think about you know, how this affects the bond length and bond strength, let's think about an S orbital in general. S orbitals are closer to the nucleus than P orbitals because remember S orbitals are spherical, P orbitals are lobe shaped, so the electrons in S orbitals are closer to the nucleus. And remember the nucleus is positively charged. So what this means is that the electrons, which we know are negatively charged, the electrons in S orbitals are held more tightly because those electrons are closer to the positive nucleus. So think about um, opposites attracting. The negative electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus. So electrons in S orbitals are held more tightly. So now applying this to the hybridization, more S character means more tightly held electrons. That also means stronger, shorter bonds. So think about if these electrons are held more tightly, that's going to pull them in closer, making the bond shorter. If they're held more tightly, Anything that's held more tightly is going to be stronger, so that's a stronger bond. So now, applying this to our um, examples above, because we have the triple bond that has 50% S character, that's the most S character. 25% is the least. So the triple bond is going to be the shortest, and the strongest. A single bond will be the longest and the weakest. Now let's extend this one step further to an example where we're looking at two carbon-carbon single bonds. So up here it was a little easier to judge, single, double, triple. But how do we compare two carbon-carbon single bonds? What you can do is look at the hybridization of the carbons to figure out the orbital overlap. So in this first one, both carbons that make up the bond are sp3 hybridized. Um, I wasn't very consistent here. I put the two hydrogen 
coming down off of the carbon, and then here I put them beside the carbon, but it really doesn't matter. They're both just CH2 groups. So what this tells us is that the bond between these carbons is made of carbon sp3, carbon sp3 overlap. Now if we look at our second case, the first carbon that makes up the bond is sp3. The second carbon that makes up the bond is sp2. So the overlap in orbitals, the first carbon brings an sp3, the second carbon brings an sp2 orbital into the overlap. So now we can say that here we have more s character. And that means this particular bond is stronger and shorter. compared to the other single bond.